Hello, hello. Welcome to the Fox vs. Samus guide. And so th the, the last video I did in this style was over a year ago, and that was Fox vs. Falco. And I realized back then that the process of editing that video was an absolute nightmare. And I could do it as scripted again, but I decided against it because I want to do these more frequently. And the only way I'm going to do these more frequently is if I make them easier to produce. So this video is going to be a lot less edited than that one. That doesn't mean there's not going to be any cuts because I hate how people, you know, ramble and don't get to the point immediately. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll set up the situations in training mode and then I'll jump between the different things I want to talk about. And I do have a script, but I've decided not to use it. I mostly wrote it down to, you know, go, gather my thoughts. So I know like which order I want to talk about things, right? So the Samus matchup, right? It's, it's one of those matchups that I think it's very rare for Foxes to understand very well compared to like a Marf or something. Mm -hmm. Most people have like one or two Samuses in their region who farms all the Foxes, right? And there's a good reason for that. The matchup isn't very intuitive. And I think w if you don't understand a few like keystone concepts, stuff like what to do against up B, how to beat CC, and like like all of that stuff, then you're not gonna you're not gonna beat a good Samus ever. So this video, what I'll do is I'll go through like all of the super important stuff, and then towards the end I'll start rambling about how how I like play neutral and stuff, right? So this is gonna be fairly concentrated, but I'm it's also not gonna be as structured as normal, right? So. That, that's the gist of it. Let's get into the training mode setup. So, do, do, do. what I've got set up here is a Samus on FD. And the reason for this is because I want to showcase one of the most important concepts in the matchup, bar none. Nothing I feel is more important than this. And that's how bad of a move Samus's up is. And a lot of people, I saw this when I started playing, and I still see it. They talk about Samus's up B like it's something you have to play around. But outside of very specific situations underneath like a top platform, you're always, always gonna be actionable first with proper DI. What do I mean by this? Well, it's easiest to show here. So let me reset the state, do no DI, and laser out. So with no DI on FD, you get out before Samus 100 out of 100 times. If you DI out, well, obviously I fell out there, which, but you see, you see how high up I was when I jumped there? That's above every side plat in the game. There's no side platform higher than that, which means that on side platforms and on uh, the, the, you know, flat stages like FD, if she up Bs, you get to punish her. So, if you know this and have proper DI, which is just holding up and a direction, so it's like diagonally up and away, if you have proper DI and do that, then you, um, then you should never ever take more than 12% damage. And most cases, you should actually punish Samus. So like, l let me showcase this again. You see, I, like, I, I just land on her. But even better, I can get like whatever here fell out there, but, but you, you get the idea, right? I can just run and up smash her and she's in lag. So that's extremely important to understand because I see stuff like foxes talk about like it do near into shield and but it shield pokes, right? Sometimes it just shield pokes. So you do near into light shield. And I'm like, that loses to so much other stuff when you can just ignore it. So the way I play the matchup and the way I recommend all foxes to play the matchup is to not even consider up the uh, legitimate threat except if she's underneath a top platform. If she's under a top platform, the situation is a bit different, and I'll probably show a clip of it uh, right here, I'm not entirely sure. But if you don't DI correctly, you will land on the platform. And if you land on the platform, that's when she gets the punish. That's the only scary situation with the up B. Everything else, you should be actionable first. So the saving grace in those spots is the fact that since it's a multi-hit move, you can like pick which direction you want to go. And if you SDI, you get out like early, right? So you can pick, do you want to go like here, pop up like that? Or do you want to go 
here. And if you do that properly, it's it's kind of difficult because if you fall out early, you don't go nearly as far. But like you can pick which direction you want to go super easily. Uh, and, and if you do that, you should get out every time. It's just I tend to SDI too much. And if I SDI too much, I can actually pop out before. And if you pop out before like that, that's when you land on the top platform. So most of the time you just want to hold the direction. And if you hold the pop proper direction when you get upbeat underneath a top platform, you can always like just go to one of the sites and not land on it. It's just that's harder than just doing nothing and getting out for free, right? So it's worth mentioning anyways. But just in general, like this move is absolute garbage. It's so bad. So I think that's super important to understand because otherwise you're going to be scared of something that isn't actually threatening at all. So that's like the first thing I want to discuss because without understanding that she has a extremely good auto shield game right but if you know that the move is like minus on hit suddenly it's like her auto shield game is absolute garbage she can basically only wave dash out because her nair auto shield is slow her up b is bad and her um role is abysmal she has like one of the worst roles in the game right so suddenly her auto shield games is absolutely garbage. And I, I played like many, many, many Samus's and at this point they only up B when they can edge cancel and then we re we reset to neutral, except I get stage positioning. And it's like 10%, but I have stage positioning and we're back to neutral. I don't care. I, I don't think that's a risk that I should consider. So the way I play against up B is just I don't consider it a part of the equation. I, I always do like the correct DI and then I get out for free every time. And obviously, if you don't wiggle out, so like you can just wiggle out and then you're actionable. If you don't wiggle out or spam B to laser out, then it's harder. Then you're just like, if I do nothing now, then I'm gonna fall down like that. And that's the trap a lot of people fall into, but you can always just laser out or um, uh, wiggle out. So it's it's very important to know that because otherwise you're gonna get destroyed by uh, Samus's out of shield game. She, she goes from having one of the best in the game to one of the worst in the game. So that's the first concept. And now I'll cut to Uncle Punch instead. And we're back. So this is um, Uncle Punch instead because the one I wanna showcase now is more of the CC aspect, right? So one thing that makes Samus CC especially annoying to play against compared to essentially every other CC in the game. There's some exceptions. I, I think Marfs can be... No, Marfs is kind of easy to play against. Uh, Captain Falcon can be kind of annoying. Is that when they get hit, they lean backwards. And, uh, well, when you lean backwards when you get hit, if I drill in place here, you see how she sort of like just teleports away. Like, if I do SDI chance 0, she's still, like... She's still just, like, leaning backwards. Like, Shine is gonna whiff here. And if, if I do it in place, like, a character that doesn't lean backwards, if I do that drill in place and the first hit connects, that guarantees that the rest of the hits are going to connect if he doesn't SDI. Uh, so if they don't ASDI or SDI, uh, against characters like Marf, I drill in place and, uh, well, every single hit of the drill will connect if the first one does. But because Samus leans back when she gets hit, that's not the case. So that makes it kind of tricky to deal with CC and it, it changes, well, it changes the rules. Because if, if she didn't lean backwards, doing drills in place would be very, very good. Just doing like slight drift drills would be exceptionally good against Samus, but it's not. It's actually very bad. Uh, because if you do it in place and she just like down smashes afterwards, then you get punished. And your shine is going to whiff when she's leaning backwards. You might hit the foot sometimes, but that's not reliable. So, uh, uh, how do you deal with CC then? Well, there, there are two ways really. and uh, Or three ways. You can, you can play around it with laser camping. Like, laser camping isn't bad against Samus at all. It's actually very, very good. Uh, and it's, it's something I'll get into a bit later. But overall, I don't think that's something I abuse that much. I don't laser camp on very many stages. I do on uh, Dreamland, because you can circle camp her very effectively. But other than that, I barely laser in the matchup. Or, it's not true, but I don't laser that much. It's not a cornerstone of my uh, playstyle against Samus. So instead, what do I do? Well, obviously you do have approaching drill. 
And because she leans backwards, you might think that, you know, approaching drill is better. But right there, you saw the issue with it. If she if she ACS through you, she suddenly like teleports like way behind you. So if she if she if she doesn't ACI, you see how she like she leans into me and it's like no problem at all. But if you ever accidentally overshoot, then you're suddenly like you're way way past her, and your shine isn't gonna connect. So th that's that's sort of annoying. What this means is doing fewer hits of drill is very very preferable. So what what I end up doing is I end up I very rarely do like a high drill like that because it's, it's so frequent that they just ASDI out, right? So instead I always do like a fast full drill. And I, I try to only hit a few hits. Because if I don't hit only a few hits, then it's really easy to SDI out of. They only have to hold a direction on the C stick to SDI out of it. But if I uh, if I only hit them like three t two or three times like that, then they can't do it. They can't they can't reliably get out. Uh, uh, and it's most of all, it's like not reactable, not even close to reactable. So that's one big thing. I very rarely do like this, like slow drill. And if I do, I always do it overshoot. And I might not even do, um, if I'm doing like, if I, it, it's kind of easy to tell sometimes if they're going to go through you. Like if I do this drill, then it's pretty obvious that they're going to go through me, right? And if I can tell that they're gonna go through me, then I might just actually shield afterwards. Uh, uh, because her, her grab isn't scary, right? And the up isn't scary either. So if she uh, if she pulls the trigger on like an F tilt or a down smash or something, I don't really care if I shield. If I shield, that's a punish for me. So that's like the one time I might do aerial into shield. But other than that, I, um, I, I mostly just do like their shine. The next thing, which I think is arguably a bit better is, um, doing a nair that doesn't turn her around because if you do a late nair if you do a late nair then uh, you might turn her around right but what you can do is you can do a nair that hits in front of her but makes you land behind her so that's this nair so so i like to do this nair a lot where i end up behind her because if i do this nair she doesn't really have anything that that comes out very fast um her down smash hits behind her on like frame 12 i think uh, or frame 16, it's somewhere along those lines. And that's that's kind of late, and it's not really that scary. I can always get something out first. And her down tilt hits in front of her. Like, every move she has except up B hits in front of her. And, well, we talked about up B. I'm not really scared of up B. So doing this nair and landing behind her, but not turning her around, is super ideal. So I end up even at 0% against Samus, because she doesn't have anything fast behind her. I often end up doing this nair a bunch, where I, where I know I'm gonna... I'm gonna end up behind her, and if I do that nair, that's like, that's my main option in the matchup, right? So, those are the two ways I deal with CC. Obviously, if I see easy drills like that, I'm gonna take them, but if I don't feel like I have an easy drill, I might just do, you know, the nair. Uh, depends sort of like what they like doing. If they're moving around a lot, then nair is mostly better, but if they're, if they're sort of stationary, trying to, you know, space F tilts and stuff, then Nair is generally, in my opinion, a bit more consistent uh, to deal with Samus. And she can, she can in theory turn around and do like an F tilt the other direction or down smash the other direction. I just haven't played against anyone who does that. So I don't really consider it a uh, something to play around yet, but I might if I play a Samus who does that. So those are like the main ways I deal with CC, and they're very important because otherwise, if you do like if you do like the drill and you just miss the shine like every time, you're gonna get absolutely destroyed. Uh, and obviously, the f the fourth way would be running shine. I don't really like running shine that much because she's very much looking for like a down smash, and uh, the down smash DI uh, you you do the worst possible DI when you uh, running shine. So I I rarely use running shine in the matchup actually. Uh, if anything, I kind of like just spacing bears a lot, but not at zero. But I like if if she's at like thirty percent, then spacing backers, even if she um, even if she like di's down, she's still gonna slide kind of far. Obviously, th this is down and away, so she slides a lot farther than normal. But it's still like it, you're still safe afterwards. Is what I'm saying. So uh, that's the main way I handle um, I handle CC. I play around it that way. Uh, and that's important because, well, 
if you can't deal with CC, you're gonna get absolutely destroyed. And especially the like multi-hit drill thing where she leans backwards, that can mess a lot of people up because they they don't understand that when she's standing here, you're not actually meant to hit where she's standing. You you're meant to hit right behind her because of how she leans. So if you don't aim to overshoot, you're not you're not gonna link it into shine very reliably. So that's how I deal with CC. And with that said, I'm gonna go on to reversal training. Du -du -du. And the reversal training oh, uh, uh, is very important here because, well, it turns out that all of her smash attacks are punishable and they're not even that hard to punish. So you need, you need to be prepared to wave dash out and punish this. Uh, F, F smash is harder. F smash is harder, but down smash especially is super easy to punish. And the thing is, a lot of foxes think they can only get this shine, but that's actually not the case. You can actually just straight up get the smash attack immediately. And because she's super hard to wave shine, you should almost always aim for um, just the wave dash out out smash, I feel like. Not against F smash. F smash, I always go for the shine, but against down smash, I mostly go for a. Um, I mostly go for the smash attack immediately, right? But if I'm if I'm not feeling confident, I might do uh, shine instead. In general, though, uh, you have to get very comfortable dealing with uh, punishing her on shield. Because if she gets to attack your shield without taking massive damage, this matchup is a lot harder than it has to be. And on that note, uh, her down tilt as well is super laggy. So, very important to understand that if she ever down tilts your shield, even if you're like behind her, if I'm facing away, uh, uh, if I'm facing away, I can still do that, right? And I can actually just turn around and grab. So, very important to understand that down tilt, both her common smash attacks and. Uh, Actually, her F tilt are all punishable on shield. However, very important, F tilt is not reactable. You can't react to the F tilt hitting and punish it reliably. It's a frame perfect like wave dash out. So the only way you're gonna get a punish out of shield on F tilt is with like a running shield. So I do a lot of like I do a lot of running shield in the matchup. Because either they do it late and then I up smash, or they do it to like tipper me. And if I know they're gonna go for the tipper, then I th then it's a predictable timing. And if it's a predictable timing, you can actually wave dash out and punish it. It's just you can't actually react to it. So if if I see that I get hit while I'm super super close, I go for the up smash immediately. But if I know that they're gonna try and tipper the up tilt, and I'm doing a running shield in neutral. There's only one timing they can do it, and that's the only time I think it's reliable to do um, wave dash shine out. And I do hit them at least a few times per set, generally. Uh, and he, that's actually the links into the next point. What she wants to do, what she wants to do is this up tilt, because the up tilt is safe on shield. So if she sees you running shielding, if she does down tilt, down smash, F smash, F tilt. All of them are punishable on shield. That means she wants to do up tilt, but up tilt is really slow. So most of the time you can like guarantee a trade or just, you know, hitting her before it comes up. So that's how you set up a 50-50, which I think is very favorable for Fox, uh, where she's looking to stuff you out, especially if she has like stage control and, um, or she's in the corner rather when she can't like run away. And in those spots, it's uh, it's very advantageous if your mix up is like running shield or running shine, right? Because running shine will most likely beat the up tilt, uh, uh, or it'll, um, uh, uh, but it'll lose to like stuff like down smash and stuff like that. So doing like a running aerial and running shield and running shine, those three things, I, I do mix them up a lot. Running down tilt is also very strong in the matchup. And that's specifically because so much of what she wants to get, all of her payoff moves are bad on shield. So that's the that's like the big gist of it. I really think uh, dealing with CC 
and um, dealing with CC and punishing her for attacking your shield is like the most important things in the matchup. If you can't do those things, you're going to lose. And in the same way, if you're scared of up B, you can't do the mix-ups I'm talking about. Because what I want to do is I want to do an early aerial. And an early aerial will let her up B me out of shield. And if I do an early aerial and I don't get out and I get up B to like the top platform, I take massive damage. And that's that shouldn't happen. So if you don't know how to deal with up B, how to deal with CC, and how to punish her for attacking your shield, you're going to lose the matchup. Those are the most important things to understand. After that, it gets a bit like, it, it, it's no longer as cut in stone. Those three concepts are by far the most important things in the matchup. Uh, uh, other than that, well, some nuggets of information would be that if she missiles you, every move you do except down air uh, beats it. So like you can jab a missile and it'll it'll explode. So a lot of the time, she, she's, Samus is, that aren't very good, or even like some some good some institute sometimes they'll uh, they they'll set up a missile in front of them and start moving with it towards you, and some will go for like a missile grab or like a, a missile down air, and uh, both both of those lose to just nearing the missile. So a lot of the time I think um, I think you you should you shouldn't you should very rarely be shielding a missile. Uh, even power shielding I don't think is that good because you, you, the power of the missile is reduced by half and reducing the power by half is uh, very significant. It's never going to kill and it's not going to combo either. It's like in this very specific spot where it doesn't lead into combos, it doesn't kill by itself. So it's like there's very rarely a situation where I'm like, ah, I should power shield here. A lot of the time it's just better to eat the missile with an air and, um, and you know, hit her afterwards. Or sometimes I might even do like, uh, I might even like up smash it or dash attack it. Uh, because it clanks with the move and then the uh, the end lag is stopped. So a lot of time you can like dash attack it and you're immediately actionable, like frame one afterwards. So those are, I guess, the most important things. Uh, um, obviously at far distances you can shine and all that juicy stuff. And sometimes if she's like not doing the uh, missile into downer and she's going for like a grab, shining it is actually really really good because then you uh, then she might just die if, if she guesses wrong. So uh, that mix up is very strong. Mm -mm -mm. Well uh, aside from that, well punish game obviously I'm looking for the wave shine stuff. Don't up smash at low percent though. Uh, she can uh, she can ace the eye down and uh, tech, and if she ace the eye down and, and techs, then you're fucked. So wait, if I do down and away the eye, and I do tech in place, yeah. So you, you see how she teched in place there. She's actually actionable before me. So at low percent, don't wave shine up smash her. I think it's like three percent where it stops where it stops being possible. Let me let me set her to uh, four percent. God damn it. Never mind. I don't remember what percent it is. There's some percent where she can't do it. I'm probably thinking about like CF or something. Oh no, it's it's CCing it. So so I should actually look this up, exact percent where she can't do it. But in general, at low percent, don't use up smash. Uh, uh, I, I much prefer doing like even if I have to reset it, so like I do a down air into another down air, I think that's preferable to doing an up smash and getting punished for it. Because every good player is going to try and go for that taking place. Uh, so you want to avoid that. I often actually go for grab. And the grab punish on Samus is a bit unintuitive in that she is actionable at the same time as you almost every time. So you're not going to get anything guaranteed. But the same way where you up throw a Sheik at 0% and you can either read them coming down with an aerial and like up tilt it or short up up air, or you can read them jumping away so you do a full jump up air. Uh, there's like a 50-50 mix up versus Samus as well, especially if there's no platforms. Because what she wants to do is she wants to either bomb away or she wants to, um, or she wants to fall with like an air. Uh, and if you full jump up air, you're gonna get hit by a, um, by like a, 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 you're not gonna hit her and she might just bomb and then fall afterwards. So what I do a lot is I up throw into, um, into a short hop. 
as a bait. So I up throw and then short hop and then up air. And if she bombs the first time, suddenly her mix-ups are way worse. Like if she bombs immediately because she thinks I'm gonna jump, then I can sort of like see where she's uh, drifting and it becomes really hard for her to space around the upper afterwards. She has to like jump away. And Samus without a jump, contrary to popular belief, it's not hard to shark her. Because of her slow fall speed, she cannot challenge you from above, which means even if it's, she's difficult to hit, just the fact that you, um, that, that you incur no risk for doing so means that I've, yeah, I have sets where she's at like 60-70% above me and I just I literally just do this over and over like 10 times I'm, I'm, I'm just going for the up air and like nearing into her or whatever and and there's very very little risk in doing so so if she has to expend those resources because I baited a up throw short hop that's very very strong and of course there is the down throw mix up but I don't really like it that much. Uh, I do do it at kill percent, but only if I'm not near the ledge. If you're near the ledge, getting a back throw is actually kind of really good. So I, I do like going for the uh, back throw or, um, or F throw at like mid high percent way more than I like going for a uh, down throw. So that's how I do the throw stuff. Um, aside from that, the punish game, well at 0% you do have like the running, sh the running shine stuff. And like, uh, down tilt isn't bad either, because it, if she takes in place, like if I'm gonna try and, I'm gonna buffer a shield. So I'll, uh, you see how fast I got the shield there? Even if she takes in place, she can't actually punch you guaranteed. You get the shield in time. So that's a way to beat the ASDI down take. And it's still like combos um, at the tipper. So wave shine down tilt is pretty good. Uh, uh, at higher percent, at like 60. I kind of really like just doing a uh, wave shine nair uh, because if she doesn't di away and does like uh, survival di or whatever, which she shouldn't do, that's generally where it or like uh, uh, that's generally where it starts linking. Let me set it to combo di. So a lot of time, I feel like I can I can hit the uh, nair and get like follow ups afterwards. So I might go for that, but overall it's like there's still not a 100% of the time best option, except for um, down tilt up air is really really strong uh, when it starts killing. So I, I like doing down tilt up air as well. Uh, uh, um. Also, if you're um, if you're in a in a tough spot where your your tech skill is off, there is a, a, a one thing you can do against Samus if you don't feel like you're gonna hit like the perfect wave shine every time, is you can do a um, you can do a shine fall jump, and then uh, either falling there and like reset it like that, or doing a um, upper. So if I feel like my tech skill is off, I might just actually go for this instead because it's uh, the inputs are kind of brain dead in comparison. So that, that, that's one way to hit the, um, the running shine, uh, uh, punish a bit more consistently. Hmm. Other than that, right, like there's not really very, very many like true setups that I'm looking for. In general, I'm looking to fuck up their DI and then just like, then just sit here and, you know, juggle them and get like two or three hits because she can't challenge you coming down. Uh, you end up just having her in the air almost forever and si since she can't challenge you, you end up just, even if they're not true combos, you just like near, 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 four there, four there, four there, upper, upper, you know, you, you, you get all of those carry combos without really trying very hard. And uh, the, 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 the last thing that you're looking for is at high percent, I very much, um, I very, very much go for like soft hit back here, either as like an approach or a softed nair as an approach because either it links into the sub air or it links into up smash depending on di so random di and also like it either links into up smash up air or if she doesn't take immediately and just does uh, done and away and then uh, mistake if she doesn't take immediately you actually get a uh, you actually get a uh, it takes chase, and her rolls are kind of bad, so it's it's actually kind of easy to take chase her, I think. So a lot of time, I'm just I'm trying to follow her afterwards. 
So you, you can get an upper, an up smash, or a tech chase if she doesn't immediately, you know, take her all away. So soft hits, very strong in the matchup. So yeah. Mm -mm -mm. And I don't think I have that much more to say. One thing would be that when she's tethering at the ledge, when she's tethering at the ledge, you end up um, you end up in a situation where you have to stall. But what you should know is that she uh, she can only tether for half the time you can hold ledge. So you can hold ledge for I think 10 seconds or like 15 seconds, and tether can only hold for half that time. So if you just hold ledge, then she's going to be forced to um, to go up eventually. And she can't go up with a hitbox immediately if you're holding ledge. So if she's tethered, she has to like wall jump up B or you know wall jump back here. So a lot of time I'll um, I'll hold here and I might stall, but because she she only has like less time than you, you actually get to play like a timing mix up. A lot of foxes they uh, they immediately like drop shine. What I like to do is I like to wait and if I'm still like invincible after stalling, so as so I stall right and I'm invincible for half a second, if I'm if if I've stalled. I'm going to wait out my invincibility. If she goes up immediately, I'm just uh, like back airing her or something like that, right? But if she doesn't, then I end, I usually wait like one second and then I do this shine down air. Because if she she might get hit by the shine and then she's dead, or she gets hit by the down air on the way up. So my mix my, my usual like flow chart is if I'm holding ledge and she's tethered, I do this into down smash. And that covers a lot of timings just by itself. So you, you end up like covering half the timings just by doing that. You can also do like regular get up mix ups and stuff, but I don't think they're that powerful. So usually it ends up being, they, they end up like bombing, you know, up here at that range. And I end up just doing like rising back air, take ledge, rising back air, take ledge, rising back air, take ledge. Oh, shine. Like th those are the main ways you you keep her outside. And then she gets the tether. There's There's very few ways you can guaranteed make it so she dies for tethering. Uh, the, there's some like situations where she doesn't have any resources to mix it up and in those spots I, I just like I just short hop out and you know shine her for tethering. But when she does have resources I think it's generally better to just take ledge, let her tether and play the mix up afterwards. And honestly I think that's about it. I, uh, I don't have a lot more to go through and uh, um, if you learn to um, if you learn to avoid up B and you learn to avoid the, 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 um, her CC bullshit, then you're gonna do ten times better in the matchup. Uh, laser camping, I mentioned, so I'm actually gonna go into that real quick. I don't like doing it on small stages, but on Dreamland, she's actually not really that good at dealing with you just you know circle camping her. So a lot of time you can just like play one mix up and then either run through her or take top platform and then go to the other side and laser camp her. So if you if you don't want to play the like low percent mix ups where where she's a lot stronger, you can uh, you can definitely opt to just laser camp her. Uh, she also because she wants to like get her high payoff moves, running shield is really good, right? And in the same vein, I really like doing uh, uh, ledge dash shield because if she down smashes or does like a badly spaced F tilt, then um, then I get an up smash afterwards, or I just dash up smash. So yeah, uh, there's obviously gonna be things I haven't gone through here, but I wanted to actually get this out because I haven't produced anything in over a year, and doing this like semi structured style, I think is um, I think might be a bit better than what I've been doing before. So this way I can actually do like a guide for every matchup instead of, you know, releasing one every two years. So hopefully this hasn't been too painful to sit through. And I've tried to write down my... Um, uh, da -da -da -da. Uh, in which order I want to talk about stuff and go through it, you know, one by one. But uh, I'm not sure how well that was done. And if this, is, uh, if this has been painful, if it, there's been too much, you know... Um, rambling around, then please say so in the comments, right? And in the same vein, uh, not only do I make these videos every blue moon, and hopefully a lot more frequently now, I do also stream on uh, on Twitch. So if you want to check out my stream, I do lessons and, you know, random rollback netplay. Uh, feel free to come over, right? So yeah, that's been it for me. And uh, hopefully this guide has been helpful. See you around and 
start beating all the Samses at your local, otherwise I'm going to be disappointed in you.